Welcome back to another episode of the Arc Switch Survival Guide. Today we are going to teach you how to tame a Tapehara if you run into one out in the wild where you're not near your base. So this is a male Tapehara and we are going to try to tame it so it can be a boyfriend for the female Tapehara that we tamed in the full How to Tame a Tapehara guide that we did earlier on. So uh, this will show you a lot of good techniques on how to sneak up on a Tapehara and how to use a bola to trap it. And uh, we're also going to give you the first glimpse we've had of a tech raptor. This is a robot velociraptor that we're going to run into in the wild. And I will also show you how to uh, use a seagull to get enough prime meat to tame any carnivore dinosaur on the ark, even out in the wild. And if you wait till the very end, we'll give you a little sneak peek on why we wanted a male Tapehara, and also why you've sometimes on some of these videos seen more than two Tapeharas lying around our base. So we've been doing a lot of things in the last few videos that span a lot of time, but every now and then while we've been doing these, I've checked across the river to see if anything interesting shows up on Metal Mountain. And sure enough, we have a male Tapehara that just spawned across the river and I am going to see if I can tame this guy because it is really helpful to have a male and female Tapehara because we can start breeding them. So I am going down really low to make sure I stay below his line of sight because he cannot see me if I can't see him and I'm trying to stay where I'm below the cliff and he can't actually spot me because if a Tapehara spots you it will fly away immediately and they can see you from a pretty good distance so I want to be real careful to keep hiding behind rocks and you know down below the cliff and everything now the Tapehara that I'm riding is really helpful because it makes it really easy to maneuver around and stay out of this guy's line of sight now I need to be careful because he's taken off and he's flying and when he turns away I might have to get down below that cliff because if he gets above me he'll spot me and just take off running and I'll never see him again. These things fly so fast you cannot keep up with them. So okay he's just kind of meandering around in the air and they do that a lot. It'll take a little while for them to land. Also if they get attacked by a wild dino they'll fly off again and go way up in the air and you might never see him again that way too. So I'm going to hover below the cliff here and just try to stay out of his line of sight as much as possible. Now it's a good idea to hide behind boulders, behind trees, any of that stuff, and just wait until he lands again. Now thankfully these turtles have cleared out the Dilophosaurs that were down here because those can actually attack and scare off a Tapehara too. Now I've pulled out my bola and I've got it ready, but I want to be real careful. Okay, I'm going to, oh, nope, okay. He's, he's freaking out, but I just barely hit him. Normally, you want to wait until he's facing the opposite way and then wait for him to be walking away from you. And as long as he's not facing you, you can get reasonably close. But you want to be ready to throw that bola as soon as he starts to take off. Okay, we got him down. Nice. I'm going to drop some meat in his inventory, and I'm immediately going to run off and try to get some prime meat for this guy. Because if we can use prime meat to tame him, he'll tame up a lot faster, and he'll be a much higher level when he finishes taming. Now, before I go, I just wanted to survey the area and make sure there weren't any predators around, because there's a lot of dangerous stuff that shows up on Metal Mountain. So I'm going to head back to my base real quick and grab some biotoxin. And I'll put a link in the description for how I actually got that biotoxin. But we can keep it in the refrigerator forever, and it's way more potent and easier to get than narcotics. So it's really good stuff to have. And we got something like 80 biotoxin from some jellyfish in the episode that we got that. And we still haven't run out yet, which is pretty great. So I'm going to head back up here and uh, just bring that back to our Tapehara. And I'll equip some weapons just in case we run into anything nasty. I don't want to try to shoot stuff with trank arrows. It's pretty lame when you do that. So that's something I sometimes forget is to actually re-equip my regular arrows instead of trank arrows after I've tamed something. Because that can just get really awkward when you're shooting at a T-Rex with trank arrows and it just doesn't care. So I'm trying not to leave him alone for very long because, you know, you never know when, like, 
like a Carno tour or something is going to spawn over here. But we've got a bunch of herbivores right here, and that pack of five turtles, they're like ninja turtles, they just killed off all the Dilophosaurs over here, and they could probably take down a lot of stuff. So, I mean, he's got at least some protection from these turtles. So I am going to head back to my base now and pick up my... Uh, Ichthyornis or seagull, which allows me to hunt small dinos like Lystrosaurs and Dodos, and he will actually turn them into prime meat, which is really effective. Now you'll notice this was happening before I finished my outer wall on my base because all of my dinos are still in here. And I'm sorry for jumping around so much in time. It's probably kind of confusing, but I've been trying to uh, kind of put all of our episodes together in coherent ways so it all makes sense for what we're doing. Like, you know, our last episode was all about how to make bees, even though I spotted two separate beehives over different time periods. So I'm going to run over here real quick and just see how this guy is doing, make sure nothing dangerous is around, just because I don't want to leave him alone for too long. And everything looks good so far. So I'm going to head down the beach a little bit to a spot where there's usually a couple of Lystrosaurs, and I'm just kind of keeping an eye around the river to make sure there's nothing real dangerous that could wander up to my Tapehara that's taming, because those things are still really rare, and it's real hard to find them. Now, if you want to see where you can get the best chance to find a Tapehara, I've got a link in the description of this video for my entire guide on taming Tapeharas on Ark, and that will teach you where to find a Tapehara and pretty much all the information you could possibly need about Tapeharas and taming Tapeharas. So I'm going to double tap X to toss this seagull out onto the ground. And after trying for a minute, I realized I needed to hold X and set him to hunt and retrieve. And that's why he's been refusing to pick up any of these dinosaurs. So I've got him on my whistle commands, and uh, I'm going to just pick him up and double tap X again. And that's going to start his hunting routine. He's just going to fly around all over the place until he spots something like a lister store that he can hunt. And then he'll pick it up and kill it and when it actually gets killed by the seagull he gives it some kind of a glowy buff which turns it into prime meat instead of regular meat which is pretty cool so now that he's got it he'll bring it back to me and then I can just pick him back up and when I pick it up it's prime meat now I got three prime meat out of that which is about as much as you would get from killing a mid-level tyrannosaur but I'd say that was a lot easier than killing a t-rex wouldn't you so it's really nice to have this seagull even though he was a pain in the rear to tame it has been paying off like crazy throughout the rest of the game now eventually I'm going to tame an Argent Avis, and they actually have a much higher efficiency for gathering prime meat. So that's going to be really helpful because I'll be able to turn dodos into prime meat and get even more prime meat when I harvest them. And here we are back at our Tapehara, still safe and sound it looks like. And we've got a Moss Chops running around, which kind of worries me. Oh, that's why. Okay, just a Dilophosaur, thank goodness. If you ever see herbivores running around, Whoa, uh -oh, this could be bad. Uh, okay, I cannot see very well. I usually am pretty good at turning away when they actually pull out their frill like that, because that means they're about to start spitting, but I have totally lost this guy. Oh gosh, he is trying to kill my tame. Whoa. Okay, that was really close. Uh, yeah, as soon as we couldn't see, he ran straight over and started attacking the Tapehara on the ground. So, oh man, and he is pretty low on health too. Thank goodness that worked out because we almost lost our tame here. That's another reason I really like the trick that I taught you in the uh, other episode on how to tame Tapeharas because you can get it very safe into your own base and then you don't have to worry about anything attacking it. So I'm skipping ahead a little bit. This guy has been just nicely taming up and he's taming up very quickly because we keep feeding him prime meat instead of regular meat. And, oh, nice, we have a Tech Parasaur down here, and a Therizinosaur, nice. I do want to tame one of those. Oh, gosh, okay, we've got crazy ants here. So these drones here, Titanomirma drones, 
they're like flying ants and they will kick your butt because they'd like to swarm you and when they hit you it poisons you and reduces the stamina of your flyer so if you get hit by a couple ants you can easily run out of stamina and drop to the ground where something's just going to eat you so yeah those things can actually be a real problem now they drop chitin which is great and later on we're going to use a trick where we can tame a frog and run up the rivers killing off ants and turning them into cementing paste which is a really helpful trick so we'll get to that pretty soon but for now i'm just going to drop some prime meat on this guy and let him keep on taming up and okay i see a seagull but i don't really want to fight it right now because it looks like it's keeping its distance it might steal our food but just in case so now i'm going to just kind of survey this mountain and see if there's anything real dangerous around here because there's a lot of dangerous stuff that spawns up on this mountain but i've been clearing out a lot of it for my bee tames so so far we've been in pretty good shape my raft fortress is down there at the bottom and oh that's cool Cool. Okay, we found a uh, Tech Velociraptor, and this thing is pretty awesome looking. I don't want to get too close, but well, let's get a little closer. Yeah, okay. See if this guy can chase me down to the beach, because I might actually try to tame him pretty soon. He's a pretty cool raptor, and he does not care at all. Okay, come on, little guy. Come after me. No? Okay, he's just going to chase that guy all the way down the mountain. I mean, that's fine, because by the time he kills that parasaur, he'll be pretty far away, and I don't think he's going to give us any trouble from so far up the mountain. But I may have to come back in a little bit and see if I can tame that guy. I also see a tech stegosaur down there. That's pretty cool. So they just made an update on the ARC PC, Xbox, and uh, PS4 versions where tech dinosaurs now actually drop scrap metal, which can be smelted into metal ingots. And uh, they also drop electronics and oil which is all really helpful stuff. So instead of dredging the bottom of the ocean on a dolphin and having to deal with sharks and stuff, you can actually just hunt down tech dinosaurs and get all the electronics and oil that you need. So I'm probably going to prefer that technique most of the time. And uh, you know, you guys will probably get that on Switch in the near future because they are slowly rolling out small patches on the Switch version. Now, I still haven't heard anything about the uh, free DLC see maps for Ragnarok in the center, which are supposed to be coming out to Switch in February. Well, it's now March, and we have not heard any recent news, so I have a lot of faith in Wildcard for, uh, you know, being pretty good about doing everything that they say, but they're really bad about communicating. So, you know, it still could show up any time, but it also might not. It's just really hard to tell with those guys. I really wish they were better at communicating. So uh, we've got some seagulls that I'm trying to just take down real quick because I want to hunt some dodos in the jungle here and there's usually plenty of dodos but i definitely need to kill the seagulls ha <laughs> got him right out of the air nice all right so down here in the jungles there's usually oh hey another seagull cool there's usually some dodos just wandering around this area and this was actually before i placed my grid to stop spawning up here so there still could be some dodos up here and one helpful thing is to kind of fly around slowly and listen for the sound of dodos because even if there we go you hear that even if you can't see them in the jungle foliage a lot of times you can hear their little sounds and that's how we spotted these guys so i'm just going to toss my seagull back out leave him on hunt and retrieve and hopefully he'll actually start hunting come on guy get back out there these things can be really annoying to tame and to use and it's like you just it's really hard to get them to actually do what you want but at least now it's accepting my whistle command to attack that there we go okay so we got one dodo down, and I'm going to tell him to go after this other one. And we'll grab some more prime meat off of this guy. 
So that's probably going to be enough prime meat for us to uh, finish taming up that Tapehara. He's been taming up really quickly. He's only a level 16. Now, it took like over an hour, maybe two hours of game time to actually tame up this other Tapehara we got, but it was like a level 134. Like, the higher the level the dinosaurs, they drastically increase in the amount of food and narcotics and taming time that you need to actually tame them. And they're also a lot harder to keep unconscious. They start waking up a lot faster. So usually I've been taming lower level dinosaurs if it's something that I just need, but I'm also going to start taming some much higher level ones for a better challenge in the near future now that I've got this prime meat. And prime meat makes a huge difference. All right, let me grab that poop real quick. And what? Seriously? Wow, that triceratops wouldn't let me grab his poop. And it just disappeared. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, no poop for me. I could really use some more fertilizer. I'm working on that. And uh, we'll be we'll be adding some more uh, compost bins pretty soon to my base. So I may have to shoot down this seagull because he's getting just a little too close. No, we finished taming that Tapehara. Okay, just going to add a really quick name here and then fly as fast as I can back to my base. Okay, perfect. And where is he? Great. Okay, he is flying. I love the color on this guy. Like, he's got this really cool, like, pinkish red coloring on his head. But aside from that, he's really similar to the coloring of my old Tapehara, too, which is really nice. So let me see if I can get this guy to land here. I kind of like that he's got sort of greenish uh, patches on his wings, too. That's kind of cool. It's like a really dark green. All right, so I'm going to see if I can get him to land. Perfect. And now I'm actually going to switch my saddle from the Tapehara that I'm flying on and put it on this male Tapehara. I also want to always make sure that I put him on passive because I don't want any of my dinos attacking stuff. I've got my Brontosaur as a watch Brontosaur here, and we've got our Plant X turrets covering us, so we should be quite safe. But I'm going to bring this guy into the building, and I'll show you in a little bit. I'm actually going to bring read these Tapeharas as quickly as possible. I've never bred my female Tapehara, so she will actually be ready to breed right now. And what just happened? Um, am I upside down? <laughs> I'm upside down. Okay, cool. I just stuck to the ceiling accidentally, and that, that's awkward, but very cool. Yeah, that's fun. So, uh, yeah, that's another cool thing about Tapeharas. They can just stick to the ceiling and, uh, you know freak everybody out, including myself. That was fun. So uh, I'm actually going to try to breed this male Tapehara with the female as quickly as possible so we can start our breeding program. And in the next episode, I'm actually going to show you how to breed Tapeharas to increase their stats dramatically. So I'll be showing you how to uh, basically get super dinosaurs by getting all of the best stats from one parent and the other parent to pass on to the babies. And I'm also going to show you how to do imprinting, which also increases the dinosaur's stats when you are the one that's riding it. So we'll give you a whole guide in the next episode on how to breed super dinos and how to get really good stats while we're breeding this Tapehara. And we'll get a whole family of Tapeharas going. So be sure to tune in next time for that, and make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell to enable notifications and it will tell you when this episode comes out and uh, you know once again we are working on our celebration for hitting 1,100 subscribers and we are still working on our challenge to hit 1,200 and we'll give you really great special videos for both of those so be sure to subscribe and like this video if it was helpful or if you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next video Thanks so much for watching this video from the ARK Survival Guide. If you enjoyed it or found it helpful, please like this video and subscribe to our channel so we can bring you more great guides like this one. ARK is an amazing game, but there is so much to learn before you can really enjoy it. We are dedicated to bringing you high quality guides, tutorials, and let's play videos that are fun, helpful, clean, and suitable for the entire family. There's a tutorial in this series 
for everything we have done so far in this video, check out these playlists for more episodes from this series and other guides to help you enjoy your journey on ARC.